data, totally crashed my laptop. Okay. Um, and so today, just like an hour ago, Slava set me up with a Docker container um, okay. to run on the virtual machine. Okay. Uh, it's, it was, it was in, in your case, it was just a matter of RAM memory or it's something else about the notebook that uh, it makes uh, it makes it uh, not work properly. I mean, like to crash. I, I think it was probably RAM memory. I have 12 gigabytes of RAM, um, but I think the issue was um, it loading all of those uh all the spacey models and maybe doing all the ner stuff okay ah oh, mm -hmm. mm, just thinking uh okay because then uh, but you, you did that in mm, multi-processing mode in the sense that you process multiple files at once or yep you... yeah it i use the function brandon made like parallelize uh, okay mm -hmm. frames or whatever yeah yeah then Okay, mm -hmm. that, yeah. that's possible if you have, I mean, like you have a couple of cores and all of them uh, won't, uh, all of them won't at once, uh, uh, spacey, like a spacey model, uh, the whole frame, uh, pandas uh, frame, uh, data frame, etc. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's, and you, you try this on, on the, on, on the server, on the virtual machine and it works? Um, I'm still waiting. I got all set up with the Docker image, but I'm still waiting for Slava to put the, um, the notebook in there. Cause right now we only just, we just have a, a pie file with the cord pre-processing code. Okay. Good. I mean, okay. Don't worry. I mean, like we have time. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's good. That, um, yeah, it's, I mean, that's a, the biggest problem is like the fact that we want to start everything in data frames and, uh, <laughs> and all textual They're not very information. Efficient. Yeah, yeah uh, uh, I mean like it's all, most of them are built like uh, like strings. So, and not, uh, uh, not the, the, let's say the, the numeric uh, data types, but just uh, some strings, a lot of strings. Uh, yeah, mm, yeah, but yeah, maybe we should think about, uh, think about an alternative, uh, but yeah. Yeah, because I don't, I mean, I've been doing some of the pre-processing I've been able to do like just locally. And I don't think that that's going to be the, I think that the, the bottleneck here is just um, uh, reproducing the notebook. Yeah, and so once, it, once I'm able to reproduce it, um, I don't anticipate it's going to take a ton of time to make the data frame with, with the sections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, in terms because I already talked with with uh, Slava today, and uh, I think, I mean, like, in terms of memory and a uh, number of cores, we we need to process the whole data set in some uh, in, in some real time. I mean, like a couple of hours, something like that. It's not a problem. Right. I can do it on my own uh, because I have an access to, to something bigger. But uh, yeah, I think we can, okay. It's something maybe when we are go, when we are going to think uh, about a kind of a real production uh, yeah, exactly. line something. Then we can uh, take somebody also on board who, who works with scalable uh, big data things, and there's for sure some solution for that. We're, what we're doing in Jupyter because Jupyter notebook as such is also not not uh, thought to be a kind of a production type uh, backend uh, yeah. uh, software solution. It's just for the data scientists to have a nice thing to, uh, to quote your, uh, your ideas. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah. But I, I think it, it will be something that, I mean, like on, on the long run, uh, we, we will find a solution for that. Yeah, and then just one other general question I have yeah. is, um, Brandon does have some stuff in the code to standardize the section, the, the section and the subsection names. So like introduction, methods, materials. Um, but even after that, we're getting a lot of stuff that's like yeah, that's really okay. wacky. 
Yeah, I mean, like that's what uh, we already. I mean, like there was a problem. That's why I, actually we have some people somewhere here, not in search engine, but I think that around Imran is somebody working on a, a prediction of a, like prediction of the section or something like that classification of section. I, yeah, I saw that in the um, uh, Christine Chen dropped a link yeah. on that in our. Our um, our group chat, and I was wondering, um, is that something yeah, it's, we want to look at for version thirteen yeah, or version twelve? Yeah, no, no, it's thirteen. I would say okay, because cool. the, because now we need to figure out how, because it's I think it's a work in progress. Somebody is working just on uh, to have a uh, to first to train on those day, those paragraphs of sections that are hundred uh, percent like correct or standardized, like results, methods, etc. Mm -hmm. to uh, to use it as a kind of a training set and then to extrapolate it as far mm -hmm. as possible because I, I, some I think that many of those um, messy ch chapter names it's just uh, they they don't fit to into our let's say a priori uh, a, a priori ideas about uh, sections. In terms yeah, of uh, yeah, and some some of them, like some of these preprint papers, they they might have an introduction and maybe a conclusion, and then everything else is just thrown in the middle. Yeah. Um, or oh, or just you have two abstracts because there are uh, two abstract, like an abstract of the um, of the publisher and abstract of the author. Yeah. Or things like I mean, like uh, yeah, that's possible, wild. Yeah, yeah uh, that's that's uh, we okay. So it's something that. Somebody is working on Imran. Uh, Imran maybe knows a bit more about it. Uh, Imran. Uh. Yeah. So um, I, you're basically talking about kind of like reconciling based off uh, the different sources, right? Like yeah. publisher and uh, author abstracts. Yeah. To normalize, like because to normalize the names of the sections or yeah, the, the name, name, the names of the section. Uh, so uh, normalizing so um i don't think anyone has tackled that yet um we could try with the uh document vectors but i mean we don't really no, no. have any reliable yeah vectors. but th there was somebody i mean mary saw it i i saw it somebody working I, okay i i i need a couple of minutes just to 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 uh to grab through um for the slack Oh, uh, I know, I know who you're talking about. Uh, yeah, Kriti uh, worked on that using uh, n-grams. Um, yeah, so she had like kind of like, uh, like yeah, a, a simple like n-gram search. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. But so I know I don't want to take this conversation too long, but like um, I want to rehash that predicting uh, or kind of like, jumping or grouping sections into methods and results and stuff like that could actually make the data worse specifically mm -hmm. because like for example one uh one guy he made a he made a data set where he used a heuristic that if the papers have a method and results along with other different attributes then we could consider it a trial type of paper right oh. so if we, if if we use some something that classifies into methods and results, then we get false positives, right? Right. Oh, okay, I, to be honest, I'm not expert on, uh, let's say, of, on types of medical paper, of the ontology of medical papers in terms of how they look like, what the type of uh, documents we can have. Uh, yeah, but, okay, maybe, okay, let, let's say that the, 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 this, uh, the whole topic, uh, the names of the sections, uh, we can put it aside. I mean, like we can remember it. Uh, we can uh, try something, but let's do. Let's not involve uh, this. Like, let's not cover this in V12 as a something that yeah. we need to provide yeah. now in for V12. It's yeah. Like, what I'll do is I will make sure I, I'll keep the section names kind of as they are. But yeah. I will make sure that we're concatenating all of the sentences in the right order within yeah. those section names in the data frame. 
Yeah, and if uh, there was uh, some attempt, attempt uh, by Brandon to normalize this by some regex simple expressions, uh, I, do you, do you, uh, did you see it, uh, Mary? I did, yeah, and it's comprehensive, but um, it's, it's a manual approach, and a manual approach like that can only, it, it does work fairly well, um, but it has its limitations. Yeah, sure, sure, but uh, like, to, if I may ask you just to uh, like to to add this 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 approach to the to your pipeline, so that uh, those ti uh, section titles names that let's say fit into those uh, categories designed by Brandon, let's normalize them, and the sure. rest, okay, it's yeah, we'll let, leave let it as it, it is, and let be, yeah, yeah, and, and I'll I'll keep it in mind and research it for the next. Next yeah, person. I mean, if it's even possible, because as already uh, talked with Imran, it's like there are plenty of t types of papers, and right. many of them just like results sections, idea of results and uh, section or something like that, they don't fit into it. So it's like you want to classify something that is unclassifiable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. yeah. Okay, so uh, okay, but. Good to good to so so that we sorted it out. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, now I know what I need to do to move forward for version yeah. twelve. Uh, I need to f to ask uh, two other persons. Like, oh, Dil um, Dylan, uh, are you uh, here? What's Dylan's here. Yeah, I'm here. How's it going? Um, yeah, I'm so uh, I'm just working on it over the weekend. So uh, hopefully next meeting I'll have a better report for you. Uh huh. Cool. Um, but yeah, that's okay. not much for me. Okay, just uh, just uh, remembering because uh, Mary had already problems with uh, requirements file in uh, in this Brandon's Brandon's notebook. So just uh, watch out uh, on watch out with uh, with um, requirements. File. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She, she seems like she's a bit ahead of me. So if I run into any issues, yeah. I can mm -hmm. send a message out to her. And uh, oh, yeah, that that's good. good. Oh, good. And just one I'm sorry to note. respond to your message, Mary. I saw it this morning, but I didn't have time. Oh, no worries. I saw the Canadian flag and then was like, if that is your flag, it was like, yeah, we'll have a time difference here. <laughs> ah, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so just one thing more, uh, because also in space, we have those embeddings for the whole, uh, like, uh, for whole entire document and sentences and words. And uh, we already talked uh, about it as a kind of an initial type of embedding we are going to use for semantic search. And I found that only on this early stage we can, let's say, uh, ameliorate uh, this approach just by, because uh, if you use spacey, you can easily uh, prune out all uh, function words, for instance. And it will be very useful, I think, for the embeddings uh that we don't we don't produce them by averaging all uh, all work embeddings from the document or section but before ever like we select only those embeddings uh that come from words uh, that are non-function words so function words you know like uh, and this that uh, uh a me you they etc everything uh, that Lukash, um, on okay. the uh, document vector side, um, I on, like I think so. I've been looking at how to get document uh, embeddings, and uh, we've been kind of struggling with that. Yeah. I think at this point, I could send you a paper, but uh, yeah, yeah, sure. they have this um, LDA two vec, which is all right. Honestly, we've been using Spectre embeddings, but Spectre is kind of uh, closed source. So if you want to create uh, some sort of uh, document vector, then LDA2VEC might be the best bet for now. Okay. Okay, I I'm going to take a closer look at it because I've heard about LDA2VEC, but actually that I, I, I okay, I had just two, two blogs about it and it was uh, the conclusion was more or less that there's no much improvement of LD, uh, LDA to VEC over a normal LDA, like non-vector or, or non, 
um, embedding based LDA. Uh, but I'm not expert on, on this. So, uh, but yeah. Mm. I mean, like, yeah, for sure. I mean, like all types of embeddings that that can be um, bet, better than that what we have in SPACY, we are going to use it for sure. But now I thought just about the, some standard, like the best, uh, like how to say, uh, the, 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 the best possible first uh, type of choice uh, of embeddings are those from SPACY because all other uh, are like, so uh, we need to do to train them? No, they are already ready. Or, Imran? Um, there is, there, if you want to create embeddings, um, yeah. I've been using this uh, sentence transformer. I think it's like a, bi uh, like, what do they call it? Siamese BERT. Um, yeah. That's already been pre-trained. It should be in the bucket. And okay. uh, apparently, it's supposed to be better than stock cyber. So, um, if okay. you guys want to, you can maybe use okay. those. Okay. So, okay. Let's let's think about it. I mean, like, just I wanted just to uh, like to, to introduce, um, like, to propose that already on the level of uh, embeddings from space, we can improve them just not by averaging everything from the entire document or. Um, let's say uh, entire section and just by removing function words and then to average uh, the rest of the uh, word vectors but yeah but but uh, we uh, Iman, you know we, we can have a couple of uh, let's say uh, vector uh, files uh, in parallel and to look how they work with different uh, semantic search uh, hyperparameters. What do you think? Yeah, I have the code for creating the embeddings already. So if you guys could just toss okay. me the difference, like which, what are the new articles, then I could just run it on my local PC. Ah, okay, oh, wait, wait, wait. Because now I, we don't know actually which ones are no, okay. Because now we are we're going also to have like section uh, level, and section level is something that you don't have for sure in V9 or V8, as mm -hmm. far as I know. Mm -hmm. uh, so you the, you know the the level of granularity is different. I mean, like we have sentences that what Brandon did. We have a whole documents like entire documents that Brandon did as well, and sections. So it's. Uh, Okay, we'll see. I mean, it's something. It's just the next step. So, um, because it's for it's required for the semantic search, actually. Uh, but yeah, do you have um, sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I just wanted to kind of note that, um, uh, Lukash, we also have like other things that we should kind of talk about in terms of just outside of uh, preparing preparation of V twelve or V thirteen yeah um, Would, mm -hmm. like i because i think like the metadata extraction and the search um i don't know if alex is here but i think alex has been kind of caught up with his uh his day job so um i'll be i'll if you could help me find some other people to uh load the vectors or dense vectors then we could get that started so that once you guys are done with the v12 then we could immediately load it yeah, I mean, like that's that's the plan. That once we have uh, our notebooks working, we're go we put this on a bigger server with more uh, RAM memory and more uh, cores. We we produce those V12 in three versions, and we we put them on on uh, on our virtual machine on our data dataverse uh, server. So that's the idea. Yeah, I wanted to get a head start on that, so uh, we don't have to wait around after it's done. You know what I mean? Because we don't, we still can't load dense vectors right now, right? There's no semantic search of any cap capacity uh, for V8, V9, or any of them. Like, like, like we are going to build them. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, and, and that's yes. And yeah. for instance, uh, to build. Uh, v, uh, to build any search capacity for, for instance, V12, for sections, 
we need first sections data like that, that, that what is uh, what Mary is doing for instance so that we have for each section has a, its own uh, ID number so that we can track then back we can track back this by this ID which uh, section is uh, chosen by the any search capacity like a search type of uh, library as a matching one that doesn't make sense what i'm saying now yep yeah so it's mainly just it's not about like oh, um i just wanted to kind of get the process started on that originally um alex and i were supposed to kind of get that up because if remember like the semantic search part, we still have to create the encoder, right? So um, yeah. I don't I don't think there's any deployed encoder ready yet. I mean and like mm, for instance, uh, in terms of for instance for space it's quite simple because encoder is already in, 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 in the, the library. And for all other types, uh, I mean at as as long as I work with different high torch models. I need just the mo PyTorch model in evaluation mode that can, uh, like, on which I can build a pipeline. Yeah, so I've been kind of struggling with that because, um, like, for example, uh, I was using the sentence transformer for uh, as a PyTorch model, right? Yeah. Um, and I couldn't find any framework that actually uh, that can handle capacity too. Um, like I use torch serve, but uh, that wasn't able to handle like any anything. The workers kept on dying, so that's that's okay. part I was trying to talk okay, about. Okay, so I, I think that uh, we can have this conversation later. I mean, because it's a very technical. I I need Google things like uh, yeah okay yeah, yeah yeah. It's like I cannot answer you now uh, from the like by heart. I don't know so so many things. Uh, yeah. Mm. Any other questions, like in more in terms of organization and not the technical ones, because technical ones we can solve, I think, more uh, effectively on, on Slack. Okay, so more. I, like, I have a technical question, though. Another one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. So, yeah, say it. Yeah, so um, it's for Mary and Dylan. Like, if you guys could kind of provide, because I noticed, like, the older data sets, they use uh, SHA keys instead of the core due IDs. Um, and if I do a direct mapping using uh, metadata that they provide, I get a bunch of core due IDs that don't have any uh, like SHA value. So if, uh, would it be possible to create like a full one-to-one uh, -one mapping? How, um... How old are the data sets you're looking at? So, <sighs> okay, uh, maybe Imran, can we have this discussion on 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 Slack? Because otherwise, it's like, uh, I, I, to be honest, I don't know precisely what are you talking about. I need to look at the data to see to see things, uh, and I think that once we have uh, uh, once we have uh, the whole like I mean, functional pipeline for V12. It can be easily mapped as far uh, into things you want. I presume. I, I don't think it's a, a huge problem to map uh, from V9 to V12 if there is any differences in terms of IDs. Sure. I mean, like, yeah, but because like now it's like I don't think we can solve this problem in five minutes, to be honest. Yeah, well, that's one of the things I like about Slack too is that it's there, like it's written down somewhere, so people can go back to it. Yeah, I mean, Imran, you're okay with it? Yeah, well, uh, I'll post on Slack. Yeah, because now it's like really, I fight. I, I, I don't think we can solve it even in ten minutes, uh, because it, you need to take uh, a look at at how it's written down. Uh, okay, so I, I, when there's no federal organizational questions uh yeah that we, we can finish for today and we can see uh, each other uh next tuesday i mean like yeah following tuesday if it's okay for you okay so uh have a nice day nice evening
place, small link, whatever. And see you later. Bye, everyone. On Slack. Take Bye, care, guys. guys. Bye.